Hey guys, this is kind of time sensitive video that I'm doing here, but I want y'all to go back and look. I got another video and I'll put its link up here. If it ain't up there, look in my channel. And this is about the virus and something really important that you should know. And I want y'all to go look, but we got another video here. And other than that one, that is about this thing sitting here. This is a large 3000 watt power inverter. And we're going to get this thing opened up for you guys. All right, and here it is. It is the Duracell high power inverter, and it comes with quite a bit of stuff. It has three outlets on it, and it has digital display. Of course, I think all of them nowadays have that kind of information on them. Has a remote, comes with a remote, comes with its cables, and I think they're about two foot or so long. Um, pretty good setup. I, I, uh, truck driver friend of mine said, you got to try one of these. Uh, he says, I know you love that one and I know you like the Potex, but this one here runs real cool and that's a big deal. So you can leave it powered up because it has like an idle down feature like this one does, um, internally. So we want to check this out. So instead of it, um, generally burning about an amp and a half it runs at about a half of an amp that's a big 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 difference if you're parked overnight in a truck or you're in an rv and this one has a modified sine wave that is like this one so i don't know if it's as good a quality as the digitally enhanced one this one is but we're going to find out dan you'll go get that oscilloscope over there and we're going to get that i'm going to show you this look below the video for any links to these that, that I can find because it is a brand new product. Uh, they have a year before model that looks similar to this but doesn't have some of the new electronics in it and we're going to check this one out. We're going to hook it up to the big battery bank. Now let's get all this set up. All right, now we have the oscilloscope where we're going to test it for sine wave quality and we'll run it up against that one. But in here in the box, it comes with nice, heavy, pretty good strength cables there so you have one aught cables right there a pair and pretty basic little booklet with it you have a remote and I believe that's about a 15 or 20 foot length cord on that just standard phone jack so believe it or not you can actually take and plug one of those old cheap radio shack phone extensions into it and go probably about another 20 feet safely with it now there's no voltage it's just a sensing circuit so let's get this thing out i'm going to pull it out of here and set it on the table okay so getting it out of the box you can see that it has a pretty neat setup on it it does have a hard wire option and individual switches to control these outlets so this is a pretty nice unit so far now, it does have your watts and volts switch that you'll be able to switch. Now, we're going to take the provided cables with it and remote so we can prove that it works and run it also a test with the oscilloscope to see, take a look at what the voltage looks like and we'll compare it to a true sine wave. Now, generally, you don't have that big a deal with these and the newer ones have gotten much better than the old ones. They're, they've improved a lot. Now, uh, the Duracell is a product that is, of course, foreign made, but anytime they put their name on it, they're, they're not going to put their name on junk. So the price of this is well worth what you're going to invest into it. And you look over here, you have three fans. Okay, you have two fans that pull down. One pulls down the the circuit side that is on the boost and this side over here on the um, the oscillation side over here for the mosfets and of course one to cool down the row of transformers that's inside of these now we're going to go ahead and do a full review and then i'll open it up and show you what it looks like inside because internal parts matter they really do so let me get this thing wired up and we'll do a power test and even hook something to it all right, guys, now before I go further here, I'm about to hook it up, but there's a lot of people don't realize on these inverters, make sure, and even if you read the instructions, sometimes it don't say, that the power switch is off and that you connect your positive first, make sure you're nice and tight, and then what you're going to do is you're going to connect your negative, but you're going to watch for that spark. 
You see that little spark right there? That spark is it charging up a row of capacitors in here. So don't panic. It's a normal thing. If it don't spark is when you need to worry. So let it spark. It'll charge the capacitors. And then we're going to proceed from there. So let me get the rest of that hooked up. All right, guys. Now, here we are. We're set up with the oscilloscope. And I want to get a close-up here. And y'all look for any of these parts I use. I'll put this. If you like this thing, look below there. I get them from Banggood for about 85 bucks, man. They're wicked good. But I want you to look at that right there. Now, that is a decent square wave. It's not great, but at least it's not total square. So that means it fields out a little bit. That ought to be pretty clean for running a refrigerator. Now, we're going to watch it as we put a load against it. But... One of the things we want to look at here is the most important features of an inverter if you're like me or in a semi-truck. Now, most inverters, they have a 15-volt overvolt. Now, if you're in a semi-truck and you fire that thing up and then the alternator takes over, it's 270 amps, and it takes over, it's going to have a big surge. Sometimes they'll hit 17, 18 volts, but most of the time, you know, if they're in good condition, they'll hit about 15.5 uh, to recover the battery. Now... This one here has a 16 volt over volt shutdown. And the cool thing about it is, is that it uses an actual sensing circuitry instead of a, a Zenier diode that just will blow out. So this one actually has its own circuitry and alarms at 10.5. So you can pull this down to good ways and it'll run down to 10 volts, which you don't want to do, but it will. Um, typically 11 volts shut them down. And because volts go down, amps go up, you know, you risk your inverter. but. That is the best thing I see right there to start with, is that 16 VDC. So that's important. Now this is 13.2 pounds. It is hefty. And you guys know my videos, I've got really huge hands, but this thing here is a big, nice, well-built inverter. Very solid. One of the cool things I'm looking at over here is look, there's no screws coming through the side. Typical cheap China build. Okay, those uh, inverters that have the screws through the side, that's not great. So in other words, inside of here, it has its own cooling system instead of depending on the body to cool it. That's a very, very, very good advancement for Duracell. Now, the Duracell model, if, you're, if we're going to look inside of this, so don't run off, but we're going to be putting a load on it. Each one of these switches independently is a 15 amp breaker as well as a switch and you can see there i've got the switch now if you're if you're wanting to know how to test for positive negative fields in a on an outlet the wider plug is your common and this is your line so the little narrow one would be your line and of course the ground now this does have an option ground on the back to where you can hook it up uh, down here on somewhere on the bottom it does have an option ground you don't got to ground an inverter it's safe if you do but never connect it to your existing system. I can connect mine to this stuff, but never connect it to your existing wiring in your house because the behavior of that ground is different, okay? Typically, you'll just ground this to your vehicle, and that saves you a lot of trouble. This is a negative ground chassis, 12-volt negative ground chassis, so it's fine for that. So now we're going to watch this, and right now you can hear it. I've got the fan on. This is a 1,350 watt little cheap heater, and now we don't want to put a heater type load on these, but if we want to see how it's going to behave, let's look. Now, 13 and a half volts, let's go ahead and switch it over to watts, and you can see that it needs to be up to 50 watts to read, which it's not going to do because I'm just on the little fan right there. Now, let's switch it over here to low, should be about 600 watts. looking very good so when your curve is 2.5 percent so 580 would basically be close to 600 watts and then we're going to look over here and we're going to see if we have a slope or a different action here and you see the voltage right down here this is the voltage right there 120.7 119.5 61 hertz very stable so you want it to be between 58 and 64 on the hertz cycles per second and you want your voltage to be between 113 and 126 trust me on that 
All right, so we're looking really good with a 560 watt load on it. Now let's go ahead and switch it to high. And we'll come back over here. And we are hitting it 1260, 1250, 1270. So we're going to call that pretty accurate for 1300. Now you got to remember, that's the average. All right, back over here, we're looking at very clean. In fact, it looks like it's slightly improving with a little bit of MOSFET reaction in there, but not bad. But voltage stepped up to 121.5. That is a good thing. So you want your voltage to rise and stay with your power needs. Okay, you look over there now, I'm at 12.99. I'm pulling right straight near the meter, so of course my meter's going to react. My batteries are probably at about 13.15, but... There you go right there. Now we're going to go back over here to volts. See how accurate that is, 12.7. So they're within range. And this is this is intense. So it could be just almost a 12.8. It's not showing that way. And of course, the draw is coming through the machine in the process, through the inverter. Now back over here, we're back on wattage. So we're at 100 and, or 1200 and 1300. There we go. So we're back at that. And I will go ahead and idle it down. Never pull power off of an inverter um, after it's run hard. Okay, now 1300 is not running it hard. This inverter is good for 3000 watts, but this outlet is not. So you've got an outlet that's good for, I think they're 18, 1800 watts each outlet, 3000 full capacity. And then as you see here, after shutting it back off, very stable. That is a excellent outcome. All right, now I'm going to shut the power off on this one. And remember, you can hardwire these. This is really good. This is excellent for like an RV. In fact, with a sine wave like that, an RV air conditioner would run off this. Can't guarantee it to start unless you got enough batteries, but it'll run off of it. So we're going to shut that off right there. And then we're going to look and see if we got any kind of static power results. Within the 10%. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to pull these out. And that 10% is just the feedback inside of here as the capacitors are unloading. Now, we will go over here and let's find an outlet. Give me just a second. All right, now we're hooked up over here and this is the big inverter. I'll put the link to that baby too. That's, that's, yeah, but you pay for what you get. This here is about 400 bucks or less. That one there is about seven. So you do pay for what you get. Now, this is true sine wave, and we're going to get close up here so you can see what we're working with. About the same voltage. I'll lay that down. About the same voltage, 118 and 59 hertz. So pretty clean. Her little fan just kicked on. She cycles beautifully. I love this inverter. It's got a big charger in it that from plugging it in into a generator, you can actually back charge your battery system up to 75 amps. Really impressive. And it has a 16 volt cutoff. This one has a 16.25 cutoff. That's why if you guys question, why does he still have that one? It's, it's dynamite. It's bulletproof. And they don't even make them anymore. Shame. Shame that thing is old and clean. So um, for the price and the money, this Duracell is actually shown to be a pretty good inverter. So we'll go ahead after it's ran. And if you notice, it never even got hot enough for the fans to kick on. So we'll go ahead and power off with the switch, just like that. And it doesn't matter the position that you leave it in, the switch bypasses that. So you can install this in your basement. You can put it just about anywhere. And I think cable-wise, it's close to 20 feet. So that's very good. And if you want to add an extension, just pick up your typical Walmart house phone jack extension with the little extension on one end and you know 10 foot length and you can extend that i wouldn't go much further than 10 or 15 more feet and that's the way i look at it now the plugs are very solid they really catch well so i'm giving them an a plus on that and we're going to take this off right quick and let you look at that see how to hook it up hardware all right now here's with the hardwire option you have a built-in strain relief and you can use 14 or 12 gauge Romex into that and they will fit fine. This switch here operates the protection and the on and off function of both these, this and this. 
these are independent of each other so you'll get 1825 watts capable through this 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 circuit and then you'll get 1800 and 1825 in each of these capable now the inverter will surge to up to about 6,000 watts and some of them of the older models would only surge to 5,000 watts so this one here is a hell of a lot more impressive uh, we're going to take the next step we're going to look inside so i'm going to get this all unhooked and let's look inside let's do a component check because cheap is cheap even with a pretty cover let's do a component check and see what's worth okay we're doing an open up and view of this and it's definitely got nice heavy 10 gauge wires in it it has very simplistic components i am shocked that they didn't try to overkill it but if you'll look up in here, let me turn this light on. I don't want to pull this completely apart, but I want you to look at how large these resistors are. These are not the little film things. Of course, it's made in China. <laughs> what isn't nowadays, including Corona, <laughs> has a nice heavy row of transformers, and they're about, they're bigger than D-sized batteries, but if you'll note the cooling for all of your power MOSFETs, you notice that cooling there? They're not body mounted. And then these MOSFETs for your, your AC current, your AC voltage, look at them. Ain't that unique how they did that? That is fascinating. You see them up in there? Very cool. I like that. And look at this type of mount for the electric. So for your, your, your positive side, back here in the back, you can look at the size and girth of these bus bars that are for the power that are running through here and through the whole unit. So these fans pull on these and this one pulls down the length of your transformers. And then this is the only part of your case that might commit to any heat whatsoever, but it's the step up MOSFETs that create all the heat, not necessarily the AC MOSFETs that are in here. And if you'll look, them are huge. <laughs> I didn't think they'd be that big. So you got four on each side, four stages on each side. That is nice. That's a lot of power, and now I understand why they claim it to do 3,000, and it's very obvious. And look at the solid soldering jobs of this thing. That is very good, and that does go back to chassis, which is right back here. It runs all the way back. You see it right down there? It runs all the way back to there. I hardly ever see any inverter, not even that one, that does that. So, guys, I like it. That was a good find. I will uh, make sure that I try not to make these videos this long, but if you're going to buy an inverter, because who knows what's happening to the world, man, you need one that's not going to break down. And from the look inside of here, with 200 volt, let me see if I can let you see in there, 200 volt capacitors. You see it back there? 200 volt capacitors. They're all 200 volt capacitors. Not 125 or 150 that just barely, barely make it. And that's why you saw that over here on the oscilloscope staying so stable. Thanks, Duracell. I think I like you <laughs> after all. All right, guys. Y'all be good. Got any questions, post them below. And y'all be careful. World's getting crazy.